multifamily mindset podcast think, think bigger all right aloha and welcome to another aloha friday episode here on the multifamily mindset podcast i'm tyler devereau that's jackson campbell and we are about to freaking drop some golden nuggets right into wherever you like golden nugget wherever you like golden nuggets dropped into hopefully your ears that go into your brain yes yes not just the your ears that go no. into your no is that too far no yeah no we want go. it in the ears not the rears yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe we do both anyway uh, what are we not talking judging about? <laughs> anyway we're diving in here to sales dude we're gonna we're just gonna keep we're gonna back keep, into the sales framework yes yeah, sales framework last episode was awesome we dove into s which yes. was switching places switch seats and like how crucial that is to it's it's so awesome that that's the first one because you really have to switch seats whenever you're talking with anybody whenever that's you're it. starting those sales conversations so i'm gonna start right off dude okay well i'll say this dude. okay go ahead i uh, want to dive in because i'm stoked about this next topic. For, i'll just say that today the topics that we'll talk about today will help you identify the two most vital pieces in any sales conversation period that's all i want to say okay well let's dive in dude let's do it we're breaking down the acronyms so this week is a this episode is going to be a assess the need and before we dive into that okay before we dive into that i, I know this will kind of lead into l okay which is locate the pain we'll talk about both of them for sure but before we before we even dive into that dude what would you qualify as a sales conversation okay. last week in our episode we talked about raising capital mm -hmm. and we kind of that's how that's what we kept referring to as the sales conversation yeah. is raising capital because that is a sales that is a sales conversation for sure but how would you qualify that how would you define a sales call a sales conversation any conversation that has a purpose any conversation that has a purpose like this could be speaking with your kids this could be co-workers your spouse investors brokers like literally anything with a purpose anything that you're trying like in, anything that has directional like if me and you were just freaking chatting shooting the shit about nothing it doesn't dude but if we're trying to get somewhere well, that's a sales conversation mm -hmm. high level communication for high level results oh i love that dude high level communication for high high level results dude i love that i it, every time we talk about this particular point and topic around sales and how it's really any conversation that you're having it takes me back to pitch anything by orson clyde oh. orson. <laughs> or in class or, or orson clyde that's somebody that's some pilgrim back in the day who <laughs> orson clyde or in class or in class <laughs> my bad but that book's great you should definitely oh, my, read it pitch anything dude books, it's very good dude, yeah. and he talks about this right out of the gate right out of the gate assessing of that book. the need no no how sales is Oh yeah, a conversation that yes, you have yes, with anybody. Yes. Anytime yeah. you're trying to get somebody to yeah. do something, or you're trying to get a even a thought across, even an idea across to somebody, it's a it's a sales conversation. Yeah, really, I love it. If it has purpose, I love it, dude. Okay, so let's dive in here with what you just said. There, you said anytime, and what I want to drill home with what you just said though is this framework is a conversational based framework, like. It, I'm having a conversation. You're having a conversation with somebody. Right. That's what you're doing. So I, I just want to drill in on what you said because it is it is a conversation. Never at any point of this conversation. Well, not maybe not never. Sometimes, but most of the time, you're just having a conversation with a purpose. With a purpose as a as a this unit trying to get into a direction. Yeah. Yeah, I loved how you said that last week. How it's how you have to become one remind me Lokahi, what, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, united as one united, united as one dude and that's right along right along yep. with this whatever you're trying Good to communicate memory, on bro dude right at the dome thanks man um okay let's not get too far into that let's dive into these these acronyms today so today we're gonna like i said we're gonna talk about assessing the need mm -hmm. but as we were talking about this prior to the episode you we, we we dove in and you said that assessing the need and locating the pain or almost should be one so do yeah dive into that why i think that as we'll go through we'll kind of play it by here but honestly i think we cover these both because they very very much go cool. hand in hand it's like it's it's yeah they go hand in hand the, assessing the need and locating the pain because the pain is associated to the need and the need a lot of the times is there because of the pain so we'll we'll dive into it sweet but. so can you define the like what's the, yeah dude, let's talk about the concept of assessing the need okay sweet right out the yeah. define that for me um first of all i i believe that 
I said in the beginning that it's like the most important aspect is because understanding the person's need or why is imperative in any conversation. So, so switching the seats, right? That's trying to get an understanding of their perspective beforehand. You're trying to, to dissect that beforehand, but assessing the need. Now you're in this conversation. Now you're diving deeper with them, dude, with them to uncover their real why, mm. right? And that info weaponizes you through the whole conversation. Once again, this is a conversational based process right and that weaponizes you with information the whole time through on how you can help them because it is very hard to solve a problem that you don't understand what you're trying to solve for mm. it's like trying to shoot in the dark at a target that will shoot at a target in the dark that you can't see when you understand what problem you're solving for it weaponizes you with the information to help them solve it absolutely right if not you're just like guessing oh uh, uh, yeah which is what's crazy to me when i get on a phone call with somebody and they're just trying to this positive, this thing, this thing, this thing. That's like, you don't even know what my need is. And they're just throwing features at you. That's yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, yeah, features and things that they think are benefits, but they don't even know what I view as a benefit. Right. And that right. makes it hard. Yeah. It makes it, it makes it impossible. That's it. Dude. So good. So good. You said something. And then real quick, oh, yeah, I don't go know ahead. if I oh. said this, but we're going to circle back to it. The whole conversation, like, Especially when you get to this objection part, which once again is, is you know, a mm -hmm. couple letters down. Well, it'll probably be the next letter we talk about. A lot of the ways how you overcome that objection is circling back up to their why. We'll get deeper into it, but yeah. Circling back up to their why, dude. I love that. I love it. I'm excited to dive into that aspect of it. I love what you just broke down here and how why you have to like really understand their why and understanding their need and their why before even really leading into anything that it is that you have to offer. Because not only do they tell you everything that you they need for you to be able to provide it to them, yeah. but in those moments, if somebody that tight, if I'm going to come to you and tell you what I need, do you think I have confidence in you uh, yeah. to like share that with you? Yes. Right. There's uh, the if you can get to the point with somebody where they're sharing with you their deepest desires, yeah. essentially their desires and their whys and their wants and what's most important to them you've built the relationship that you need to build yeah. in order to get them to take action to benefit their life, yeah. right? So it's like, it's it's doing that, finding that why, while building while building that relationship with them. And yeah. from that foundation, dude, is what everything else comes from moving Bro, forward. That's exactly it, man. That's why your first, like your first part of this conversation has to be, so if, if we were to go high level, you know, Last time we did these high level checkpoints that we go through, right? The first, before we even go into like really trying to locate what their why is, dude, it's just more of a discovery phase. Like if I don't, and once again, you don't necessarily need to do this with every person because sometimes you know about them, you mm -hmm. know what their story is, you know what their background is, but listen to me, do you know the story about that specific situation and the background about that specific situation? So you're asking questions in a discovery phase that goes deeper depending on, right? So if I don't know the person, I'm asking about the per the person. Right. So so I guess I'll say this, these high level phases. One is just discovery. What is the discovery sec what it, what are you trying to discover? What is this conversation about once again? And then the second side is the needs or the problems. So like what is this emotional need that they have or their why, if you will, okay? So sometimes I'm asking them questions about them to get an understanding of them. But like you and I, right? Me and you have these conversations. I think back immediately to we're in Nashville. We go to dinner and we have a conversation. Yeah. And did I not use this exact framework? Oh, I, yeah, I can't, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Not even consciously because it's now a, an unconscious thing. Well, maybe it's consciously, but no, not, it's just it's yeah. how I operate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I know that I'm trying to help you. And you do the same thing. You do the exact same thing because we've been trained the same way. Right, it's like, right. I, I know that I'm trying to help you uncover something, not tell yes, you what, dude. but uncover it. And so I'm asking questions, not about, hey, tell me about your background. I'm asking questions about that specific situation, that scenario, what has been going on, how come, what do you want, those kind of things, right? Yeah, and that conversation was, a, was an impactful conversation, I think probably for both of us, definitely was for me, because we stayed on that, we stayed on that subject. Yeah, we stayed there. I, thought, I think a lot of times people of get away from that because it not it, it wasn't necessarily a comfortable conversation that mm -hmm. you and I were having either, dude. No, but it was beneficial, and I definitely we I definitely came out on the other side better better because of it. But oftentimes people want to run 
from those yeah. situations that they don't want to have. They don't want to stay there and have the conversation where the conversation needs to be. Yeah. They're trying to get to an end. Yeah. But but for yeah. us to get to an end, like I need to know. So I think what it ultimately happened, this is, I'm, you know, we don't, what it, I think the reason this is a good example, because I actually think that this happens all the time where mm -hmm. I don't think that you would really define like what that why is. We're trying to assess the need. Sure. Right? This conversation that we're talking about, you hadn't yeah. necessarily verbalized, even though you, maybe you knew what you wanted, you hadn't necessarily like Solidified defined, it. defined. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm trying to help you define and it's uncomfortable because I would imagine, and once again, I, I would imagine that you're realizing through this process, like, man, I actually don't know. I actually haven't defined it. And so now you're trying to define it. And this will happen with Brit. Brit does this shit with me all the time. And it's like, I'm not frustrated at Brit. I'm frustrated that's like, shit, I don't really know. But I know that I don't want this shit. You yeah. know, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Dude, I love that you're bringing this up because it, because it allows me the opportunity to share my perspective of that. Yes, I'd love because it. Because yeah. in that situation where we're having this conversation and it, where it may have where it may have looked like I didn't know what my why was, yeah. I think a lot of times your why changes. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? And like when you realize your why changes, it can set you back a little bit. You're like, oh shit, it's, it's, it's not what I thought it was mm. because my actions have not been in line with what it is that I thought it was. You know what I mean? So by doing this and having these conversations, the conversation you had with me by asking these questions and diving in in this, in this way with this framework, allows you to actually get to where it is that you need to be to un to un to undiscover what am I looking for to uncover that to discover unpack. what yeah to unpack yeah. exactly what it is what that true need is right cool dude so, so dude it's it's and, and you'll never really know yeah. if you'll never really know like you'll never really know but you'll know that it, it was impactful and helpful for that person ah. right so dude it's uh yeah 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 I don't know anything else you want to share about that um just the drilling down drilling down on it like yeah it, it, it leads into all of these build off of, off of each other but the last the s is solved together and what's cool is you can't solve it together if you don't know what you're solving for sure you and, and that yeah. person can't solve it yep. if they don't know what they're solving for so like d discovering that together gosh damn man it is so powerful for you to be able to help identify solutions and that solution may be something you. that you yeah. have or maybe it's not yeah but what's cool is if you really spend the time to unpack it you can guide them into where the solution can be found it's right. going to benefit them right uh, yep. dude i love that i love that awesome bro okay so asking questions what's the from asking questions that? where are we where are we going from there it's, and, and that is how like if you were to it, asking questions is what i did what it was what we did what i did with you at dinner really and it's literally what you do here so any, I kind of mentioned the first part of any conversation needs to be getting to know them or know about more about the situation or just kind of unpack. Okay. I said, I don't know. We had a podcast a long time ago where I said asking questions has been understanding how to ask questions has been one of the most impactful things for me as a person with leadership sales do communication period. So it's asking, <clears throat> asking questions with purpose giving them an opportunity to talk about themselves because as they're doing that and, and what questions I let, maybe I'll get this, this, this far. What questions am I asking them? You know, what's tough about this conversation. I'm teaching the framework, but I always want to go to like specific so I can get specific. The framework is the framework. Now the questions that you ask within the framework are going to be different depending on the conversation that you're having, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm having a conversation with yeah. my wife, the question that I'm asking are different than if I'm trying to, if I'm having an investor or a, a a conversation with an investor about them investing into a deal, right? They're, they're different, but the framework is the framework. So the types of questions I'm asking, like with an investor, for an example, like what are their goals? What are they trying to accomplish? Right? Like, is it cash flow? Is it equity? Is it tax benefits? Is it wealth preservation? Is it, what is it, you know, diversification? It's like, what are their goals? I also want to know what kind of problems they've been experiencing, have experienced or are currently experiencing. Maybe they've had past investments that haven't went well. Maybe they, uh, you know, if I'm talking to a broker, maybe, maybe they've been dealing with um, syndication groups that haven't went well, or they're, you know, what problems are they having? And then what has stopped them from fulfilling or solving that problem currently, right? 
So an investor that has money to invest, but they haven't invested as an example. Well, how come, what has stopped you from doing it? Is it something external? Is it something internal? What is that? What is causing the trepidation, causing the fear, causing the stall, right? To not feel comfortable investing. What is it? Right. Yeah, dude. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's so good. I love these questions that you have, but again, just a reminder, dude, it, everything's in every, every conversation is going to be a little bit different, right? Yeah. The framework's the same framework is the framework, but the questions that you ask are, are, yeah. are different. It's the, it's the goal that you're trying to get to. That's the same. And maybe we can even go through some examples here in a little bit. Yeah, let's know? do it. I love but, it. But this point, this is critical because you're asking questions, asking questions, and all of that's going to be critical when it comes to overcoming the objections overcoming objections and inspiring them to take the action that they need to take. Mm. Cause we procrastinate action for a reason. Any given here, here's the thing, any given conversation, okay, you have two different parts. You have some like as a sales, if you will, something that is pushing them towards the cell and something that is pulling them away from the cell, the, 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 um, the resistance of the cell for whatever reason. So a lot of people will try to, combat that by pushing, 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 pushing more towards, which is why you hear people talk, 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 because they're trying to push them towards. Now, the best, most effective way is to lower the resistance. And you lower the resistance by asking questions about the resistance, about why they are, what they want and what is stopping them from getting there. Because if you can reduce the resistance, well, shit, they already want it or else they wouldn't be having the conversation with you, right? So you, so you're saying attack the problems that they have? Head on, bro. You're saying ask them why they're not doing it and then talk about that. All day. Because yep. b- why? Why? Do you have anything else to talk about with them? Like, uh, that, uh, you know what I mean? It's a rhetorical question, but like, what else are you going to talk to them about? Yeah. But yeah. That's the best thing that you can do for that mm-hmm. person, dude. Yeah. You, you, and you have to believe that no matter what it is that you're selling or if you're raising money or whatever it is that you're doing, you have to believe that you have an opportunity that's the best, it's the best thing for them to solve what it is that the problem that they've stated, right? Well, bro. I just, I just listened to a, a conversation from somebody on the team to paint this picture. It was a 23 minute conversation. Yeah. Not one time did they try to discover the why, like the person's like need, the assessing the need, not one time. Mm. It actually got brought out, but that person brought it out. Okay. Not one time did they even ask them to invest, this is an investor. Now, one time they asked them to invest, to invite them to invest. And this person was asking every, call it buying question in the book, like they wanted to invest. Like the questions they were asking were phenomenal questions, but there was no purpose in the conversation, zero. And so what did they talk about? Bro, for 23 minutes, they talked about anything and everything but what they were there to talk about is chat they were generally kind of circling around it but they didn't drill down deeper as to why and that's why nothing happened there for either of them it was 23 minutes wasted right yeah yeah ty a lot of times people in that situation or they they may be having that first conversation they may be just be getting to know somebody and they might you know what i mean they might feel like that's what they need to do with that first phone call Mm-hmm. is just jump on and build a relationship, chat with them, like build confidence, build trust. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that some, I don't know. What would you, what would you say to that dude? Somebody that wants to just jump on and have a conversation to get to know somebody rather than providing is that more about what they want or about what the person they're talking to wants. Wait, say, sorry, I don't. So you said these individuals sometimes they'll, they'll jump on there and they feel like they need to have this conversation to build a relationship mm-hmm. before they can yeah. provide opportunities. Yeah. But is that what they want because it makes them feel more comfortable, or is that really what the person wants? See, it's a better question. I, and and I believe it could go both ways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is something where you really have to feel it out. But I don't believe that you ever know which way to take it until you ask questions, listen, which we'll certainly talk about that. But until you dive deeper, Mm -hmm. I also believe that so many people are running from an objection when I'm trying to uncover the objection because there's always an objection. First off. So so what am I trying to do? I want to uncover it because the minute that I can uncover it is the the minute now I can understand once again, these things go hand in hand. But what am I what am I solving for? Right. And maybe it is like maybe they are not. Maybe they do need to have that conversation. Okay, we'll fill that out. But I never know until I shoot the shot. Mm hmm. And then I'm going to get resistance. Then I'm going to figure out why there's resistance. And then we go back, circle back. Because once again, it literally is about them. So 
when you go into a situation, you have to, I, I believe one of the biggest things that hold people back, bro, and I mentioned this on the last one, I think as well, is that we go in with this preconceived mo notion of how it should go down. Man, if this person, this is the, this is the slippery slope with switching seats. Because switching seats is about trying to understand their perspective right. without bringing your own perspective in. Right? Let me restate it. Switching seats is all about trying to understand their perspective without bringing your perspective in. See, most people bring so their good. perspective in. And they're like, well, man, I don't know if this person will want to invest right now because it's the first time that I've chatted with them. Okay, well, what you don't understand maybe is that they've been to uh, – you know, this is maybe they've been to events before. Maybe they've seen a bunch of our content on social media. Maybe they've know. Maybe they know somebody else that has invested with us, and so they're like. But you are projecting that upon them because that is something a belief that you have here. Right. For example, in this conversation, the gentleman actually this conversation that I was listening to that I mentioned earlier, twenty three minute call, he had actually asked, "What's your minimum investment?" And our minimum investment is a hundred grand. Well, this preconceived notion here is. Well, they must not have the minimum. Well, it's a hundred, but sometimes if the situation's right, maybe we can go down to fifty. If maybe the situ this dude's worth nine mil. He says it about three minutes later. That he's like, No, I, I won't yeah. do less than a hundred. Like yeah. I, I just want to know what the he's just trying to ask questions because that person wasn't asking questions. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. He's now trying to feel like he has to guide the conversation because yeah. the person wasn't. Right. So you got to guide the conversation. That yeah. is valuable thing, dude. Yeah. And then when, dude, it, yeah, that alone guiding the conversation is a very, 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 very valuable thing. It's it part of frame control, which so I'm sure valuable. we can talk about um, at some point as well. So, so you're asking questions, asking questions, asking questions, but then also understanding as you're asking these questions, very rarely, there you have to understand there are two things. There's a guy named. Um, Oh, what's that book? Damn. He's a FBI hostage negotiator. Man, this is going to drive me crazy because it's a phenomenal book. And he states this in here. I don't want to steal his stuff because this is where I pulled this from. Man, I'll figure it out. We'll drop it here in a minute. I cannot think of it off the top of my. Yes. What's his book called? Never split the difference. Gosh, Nico How did from you, the back room just freaking. She's so good, dude. Can she we give it up for Nico for oh, a second? Man. Go. Chris, <laughs> goat. Um, Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. He you've talks, never forgotten that book, by no, the way. No, I love that book. That's, that's like one of your favorite I'm, books. You've quoted it a million times, so that's funny. You oh, I remember, love but this Nico book. remembered? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she knows Nico, me better than dude. I know me. <laughs> <laughs> but he talks about stated positions versus underlying motivations. And a stated position is very rarely – the emotional motivator. So, so we have to drill down. So like a state of position is what they say they want, but the underlying motivation is what's making them want what they want. It's what they're worried about. It's what keeps them up at night. Like, like, yeah. I remember when you explained this to me, when we were working together in more of a sales aspect, you, we were, we were doing some role play and we were talking about this and that first stated position is always a smoke screen. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Right. Because you're still building that relationship with them. So a lot of times I believe they throw that smoke screen out at you just purely off of not feeling comfortable enough to tell you what it actually is. Yeah. And they might not even really know, know the emotion. That or have like either, dude. Really even know how to speak to the emotional need. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah, both. Yep. Definitely can relate with that for sure. For sure. Definitely. Sometimes there's, yeah, sometimes there's times where they don't even know what it is that yep. is causing them the feeling that it is that they're feeling. And then, and then, they, then it gets really fun. Cause then you turn into a therapist. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. But you, but you do, you help them. You don't, you don't turn into a therapist, but you, you help them find that. Yeah. Why? And that Can I be need. honest? Yeah. Sometimes you do, man. Sometimes, sometimes you, you do. do. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing, man. I, 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 I retreated my saying because I don't want to disrespect therapists and how much work and study they've put into oh, what man. they do. It's powerful, dude. But, you know, my dad was a clinical sh social worker. Yeah. I and mean, if you ask my dad if he knew if he knows cells, he would be like, no. But my dad absolutely knows cells because what is cells? Cells is inspiring people. It's service because you're inspiring people to take the actions in their life that they need to take. Yeah. That's what you're trying to help them do. That takes understanding human behavior. That's what it takes. Therapists understand human behavior. So, I, so now, as like the more and more I study mindset and the more and more I study sales, I look back and I think of the things that my dad did to inspire me to take the actions that I did as a, as a kid. 
bro, we're masterful. We're in because I never yeah. thought of him as his things, his decisions that he's trying to project ever, literally ever. It was those are the things that I cared about. And it was because he understood how to help me uncover that. He was very good at that, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. You probably get a lot of that from from those experiences, dude, which is which is very totally. cool. Totally. Bro, do you have an example that you mind sharing about this? And like, I don't know, maybe maybe an example outside of the business realm. There's a personal example of sales where you where you kind of had to maybe uncover somebody's actual Yeah, you're talking about like need. the stated position versus the emotional need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. First thing that comes, tons, bro, tons. Like, I believe this is my job as a parent every freaking day, you know? But ton, I'll give you the one that comes to mind, though. Um, we maybe even have chatted about this one before, but Britt, Britt, I really wanted, a, like, somebody to come and help at the house. We had, her name's Donna. Donna had come, and, she comes and cleans, you know, she'd been coming and cleaning once a week. But we needed more than that because Britt is a very active mom, dude. And she, like, what I mean by that is, like, they're, they're going to do things all the time. And my gosh, I want, like, there's yeah, nothing right? more valuable than that. Me? So what's, but what's tough about that, if we're just being very transparent, is like, I would come home from, you know, being in the office and I'm very OCD. And so like the dishes maybe not be done, the, maybe the laundry hasn't quite been folded yet or whatever. And I don't believe, it's not that I believe that that's her role. It's our role. It's our role. But guess what our role also is to pour into the kids. But then what would happen though, is I'd come home and I, now I'm doing the dishes and I'm at, or I'm doing the dishes or I'm folding laundry instead of pouring into my kids. And so this is, a, and I was like, Britt, I'd really sit down. I'm like, Britt, why are we not having Donna come and help us more? And the stated position was that she didn't want to spend the money, right? It's like, well, it's just, it seems unneeded, like excess, if you will. Right. And I'm very capable of doing this and I'm very capable of doing that. And I'm like, well, I, know you're very capable of it but like what do you mean the money like money is a tool so i'm asking these questions i'm like what do you what do you mean by that because i believe money is a tool and if we don't use it then like then it's not a tool and i also believe that money is like you make money to buy your time back so, so when you say like the money because we don't it's not i know it's not the money yeah like we don't hurt in the air it's like i know it's not that yeah. so i'm like what what do you mean by that right and i'm just asking i remember bro we're sitting in the living room, lights off, kids are asleep, it's late, we're just chatting about it. And it uncovers after, dude, it's a while, man, of just literally I'm asking questions, bro, it's the same stuff that I'm talking about, just trying to understand, like literally get an understanding of it. And it, like the real underlying motivation is that she didn't want to think, she didn't want people to think that she was bougie. Mm. Dallas had just been in, in Dallas and, and Haley, Haley yeah, had and just been in Maui. They had been staying at her house. And one of the things that she said was like, that really like to help me understand it now is like, well, I, it's just, I would feel very weird if all of a sudden like Dallas and, you know, Dallas and Haley are just here. If Dallas and Haley are here and now we're out playing in the pool while somebody's cleaning my house, I just feel weird. And I was like, wait, okay. And I try not to judge the response, just understand the response, but it's because it's like, well, don't you think that'd be inspiring for them? But then I need to tie it back to the why. What's, what do I know for sure Brittany's real why is? Brittany's real why is loving and serving other people. She loves to pour into and serve other people. It drives her to her core. She actually thought, after more uncovering, that having somebody come and do that was almost degrading because th she's out there playing at the pool when, or the beach or whatever when somebody else is cleaning the house. And I was like, man, well, that is a form of income for someone. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Britt, do you, do you believe that we are a good family to be a part of. And she's like, yeah, oh yeah. And I was like, yeah. So we have great energy in our home, amazing energy in our home. And I know that about our home, I know that. And now this person can be in our home to taste of that energy and also make income to provide for their themselves. Like what is more valuable and service-based than that? And it was this unlock of like, okay, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's one example, but dude, this very good example, a very, very, very good example. And one thing that I just noticed in having this conversation that I kind of wanted to shine the light on is the minute, the minute that you understood what the underlying motivation was, which was, she didn't want to look bougie. She didn't want to, the underlying was she didn't want to look bougie and that she didn't want to like make Donna feel bad because yeah. Donna's cleaning while she's at the beach right now that you understood that bro, 
you knew the solution immediately. You knew it immediately. As mm-hmm. soon as she said it, you're like, oh, well, this is the solution, right? But I didn't do that. Ex- that that's the point I wanted. That's what okay. I wanted to point out is that you, when you do understand what the solution is and you do understand what their underlying motivation is, it's not just telling them the mm-hmm. solution. Yeah. That, cause that will, that will never, sometimes it works. I'm not going to say it never works. Sometimes sure. it does work. Depends sure. on the person, but it's a lot more effective when you guide them to that. Like you just did here, dude. And like what we're talking about throughout this whole sales framework, dude, is you help them see that yeah. and, 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 and learn but, it. But can I drill down? Yeah. I'm telling you the successful conversation. Yeah. Let me tell you the unsuccessful conversation. Okay. Brittany and I had had this conversation a, a lot, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. A lot. And, but no one was ever, we, it was never, it never happened. So now those of you who have been raising capital, maybe you've talked to investors and the investor says, yes, I want to invest, but then they never wire their funds. Do you want to know why? Cause you told them something and you didn't take time to truly understand what the need was, locate the pain and overcome whatever objection they have. You just immediately saw something, tried to provide a, a value, and it was enough to get them to that point of saying, sure, but not enough to actually have them wire hundreds of thousands of dollars to you. In order for that action to happen, you actually have to take the time to work through it together and not tell them, but have them uncover what it is for them or maybe it's not for them yeah right and how much more beneficial is that for the person very why beneficial well because then they actually make the decision and stay committed to the decision because it's their decision exactly not your decision exactly this conversation that we had Brittany then made the decision when before i had been trying to make the decision for for you all yeah. right 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 yeah. right dude yeah. so i mean that example is Man, it's such a good example because it's really it a lot. There's so many times where sales get hung up right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know the solution. We know the problem. We know that we can provide the solution. They know that we can provide the solution. But for whatever reason, it's it's not the option that they want to choose. That's it. It's because it's because of what we're just the talking resistance. about right now. The resistance. Dude, the conversation that I talk about, I don't mean to keep bringing this back no, up. No, you're The good. conversation that, I t- that I've listened to that I've provided feedback on from one of our team members was they had said that they, you know, yeah, well, they're considering passively investing. Well, they just want to be able to do, and the first stated um, position was that they want to diversify. They wanted to diversify their portfolio. But what then ended up coming out, not because the questions were asked, but because this person just actually just naturally brought it out was they needed their time back they needed their time back but then you have to drill down on that because that when i'm listening to this i'm like oh that is that's it but then we didn't drill down which means we didn't we could never get to the point of solving it together to drill down on that is like well how come okay yeah go ahead another thing is you didn't know if that was the real thing that could have been the Mm -hmm. stated position yeah Right. It could have, right. Because I mean, yeah. it wasn't even delve into. Yeah. You don't even know if that was actually the thing. So you don't even know if that was but either can the I be underlying motivation or the state of position. When you're, so this is why, this is why assessing the need and locating the pain go hand in hand. Because as you're assessing the need, you're going to sense emotion. So, so you need to listen, like truly, truly, truly listen. Can we get into locating the pain just a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. Let's so, dive in. So locating the pain, okay? They go hand in hand because the need, right? You are assessing the need. The need is what they want, but the pain is what happens if they don't fulfill the need. Mm. So a, a lot of times, by the way, the why is the same as like an objection, for an example. It really will be. Hey, man, I can't. I want time, but I can't do this because I don't have time to do it. Right. Which is interesting, right? But this pain is now having them, having them paint. So sure, we have them paint like what they want. But then we need them to paint, well, what happens if they don't get what they want? Okay, so help me understand that, your time back. Like, what happens if you don't get your time back? Like, what, what's going on currently? What do you mean by that? And the conversation, there was a little bit of a conversation of, like, they're developing something, something like this. And it's like, man, I'm trying to do this other thing, and I'm the only one because my other partners aren't helping. And this isn't things that we were asking questions about. It literally just came Came out out. yeah and there was a motion behind it dude energy is real and so you're looking as you're asking these questions you need to listen and observe like so as you're asking these questions listen and observe and determine like 
how do they talk about certain things? I'm telling you that when he talked about time, there was emotion there, bro, for sure. It was a pain point, and it was palpable pain point, dude. Like, palpable. and It was palpable. And so then you need to drill down, though, to verify, but also then to uncover it more. Okay, so help me understand that. Like, what happens if you don't get your time back? Or why don't you have your time right now? Yeah, and what, what are is, you missing yeah. out on, yeah. right? Yeah. What are you missing out on? Yeah. I'll give you an example of this, dude. Uh, we have this, I have a mentor that we work with. Yeah, it's called SEAL Team Leaders. And they're painting us down. They call it a, de, a de, um, desired end state. And they're really helping us with the operations of the company. But in order for them to help us with the operations of the company, they need to know the desired end state of the company. Like, what are we working towards? Well, they go through a very similar thing. Very similar thing where they make you actually, you define the desired end state. But they drill down on the pain. I can't remember what they call it now, but they, they call it something different. But they drill down and they make us drill down on the worst case scenario. Mm. And it was very, like, it's like, oh my gosh, dude, like, this shit isn't going to happen. Let's just talk about, like, the direction we're going, not this worst case. But, like, we focus on, they make us focus on worst case. And when we focus on worst case and we really, like, do that, we really locate that pain, it makes the why stronger. Mm hmm. And all I'll tell you is this, man, as we're talking about it and as we're talking about what we want and as what we don't want, that pain, wh what it was, bro, is I wanted to coach. I want to coach. This is, um, I don't know, a year and a half ago, maybe more than that. I can't really remember now, time frames. Maybe, yeah, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. And I wanted to coach. And I wasn't coaching. And what uncovered, what they uncovered from me is like, I was literally like, man, I hate going to my kids' games and I'm not coaching because I know I'm a dad. I know I'd be a damn good coach, and I have so much to provide value to provide to these kids. But I feel like I can't give them that energy because of these things over here. And then I start to get teary eyed. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. I'm on here with these are my business mentors with my business partners. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, sorry. And they're like, no, no, no. That's why we go through this side is because when you understand that side of things and you remember that side of things, it makes the why stronger. Yeah. So like you understand like what you're working towards because of what you don't want. Like that's what you don't want, but then it's what you do want, right? You want to, you want to coach, hey, dude, what do I do now? I coach. You coach. And man, and I want to coach you at a higher level. I'm just telling you, it doesn't matter what level you're at. There's pain, dude. People have pain. Let me give you an example of one of my pains, man. So good, man. One of my pains is I have never, I, I don't, I don't know, this maybe sounds a little bit, but I don't know anybody that has acquired the wealth that I've acquired, like really closely. I know obviously people, There's but people like exist, but you in my, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And so what is a pain? I want to make sure that I put it to work, not just preserve, but like grow it, man. Like it's this responsibility, this huge responsibility. That's a pain of mine. That pain motivates my actions. Now, I'm very self-reflective, so I'm very, I try to be as very, very self-aware, so I'm now trying to uncover this stuff on my own. I'm using the same shit on myself so that I can uncover it to move forward and make the decisions to get what I want, right? Yeah. Dude, it's so good, man. Yeah. I've never, man. So essentially what you what you just said is you you sell yourself. Mm. Day in. All the time, bro. Day, so what you just said is you sell yourself using these same strategies to to better yourself fact to personal it's a, so it's <laughs> you don't like like if uh, just another reason why you should love sales and why you should really understand sales because set, like personal development at its core mm. is what is it's sales, sales bro. It's, it's you're sales, selling man. yourself yeah, on yeah. a direction of, of, of what you need to change yep. and what like you need to switch seats with yourself almost yep. and it's dude that's it this is amazing and i love I you love remember i think on the last episode that. we talked about how I chatted with the lady who was talking about different mentorship programs. Yeah. And I didn't sell her on it. What I did was I really helped her understand she needs to sell herself. Yeah. Because what I did, one of the most impactful things that I did when I started in the multifamily space, bro, is I sold myself every single day on why this was the solution. I write down every single day things that I love about my wife every day. Write them down. Why? Because I want to sell myself every single day on why she is the best thing in my life. Because are there other females out there? There's a lot of them. But dude, she's the one for me. And I could give you a book full 13 one. years of reasons why. 
right? Yeah. yeah. And ex- that doesn't even explain the experience isn't just who she is. It's like, so do I think that our relationship is as strong as it is just because we're naturally just this fit? No, dude. We sell each other on we sell ourselves about each other. She does the exact same thing all the time, dude, all the time. So like understanding what we want, selling ourselves in that direction is beautiful thing. And then I'll tell you what I don't want. Do you want to know why I do that? Cause I saw my parents go through a divorce. Yeah. I saw how that was destructive for them. And I also saw how it was destructive for us as kids. And first off, I'm grateful that my parents did end up getting a divorce because at that point it was the best decision for them. And they are happier because of it. I just never want to get to that position. And one way that I can do that instead of being reactive in the moment, I can sell myself every single day on why Brit is the fit. And guess what I see why she's the fit dude. And you've never probably ever heard me say negative, anything negative negative. about Brittany, except for sometimes she's late. (laughs) <laughs> right it's like she's yeah, just it, super carefree is, man and is that and is that a bad thing i don't know dude. No, it's not actually because yeah, it yeah. balances me out she's uh-huh. very like level-headed low-key like yeah. just easy going and i'm w- i'm way more high strung yeah. she balances me yeah. out right yeah no you go no no high strung you not you no dude. she balances me out right yeah man but listen in these conversations one thing i want to drill down and i know we, we should you know get wrapping it up but one thing i really want to drill down on is that in these conversations, there needs to be a 70-30 listen to talk ratio. And all I mean by that is 70-30, 80-20. You need to be talking a lot less than you're listening. They should be doing most of the talking. You're asking questions to, in, to inspire them to chat. And you're listening, dude, intently, intently. So, so good, man. That last little bit there, man. I think a lot of times, yeah, man, we could dive in on the 70-30 ratio talking there when doing sales listen yeah. listen it's like listen because they're going to walk you through what it is that they need tyler this episode was again fantastic man very very grateful um for the for the framework and the things that we walked through here do we have a hawaiian value do you have a hawaiian value that you want to or anything yeah. else you want to wrap up with before we jump into the hawaiian i hope value? that if you have a takeaway with this i want you to truly understand why this is the most these are the two most important things and they go hand in hand it's because Think about the things that we've talked about and how we can now circle it back up. Now that we understand the pain, we understand the need, we understand it, we understand the target, if you will, what they're working towards, we can circle them back to it all the time. Circle them back to it. Paxton, I am uh, – actually, you know what? We're gonna use, I'm going to use that example for the next one. Love it. Because it's a perfect example for the next one. Remind, what, what's it about so I can remember? Paxton – um, telling me he's not sure if he wants to play football. Did I tell you this? No, but okay, so I'm no. Back. No, we'll circle guess back what that for is? sure. That's an objection. Mm-hmm. But why is the objection there? And what is his why? What is his goal? What is his need? What is his? What is it? Right. We'll circle back to it. I love it. Um, yeah. So the Hawaiian value, though, and this one I is very hard one to say. It's like paakawaa or something. Sounds pa'a right to me, kawa- man. <laughs> paakawaa. And of all these things that we'll talk about, man, this is a very important aspect of it because pa'akawa is the Hawaiian saying that literally means to close the mouth. <laughs> close the mouth, man. Just shut up, dude. For real. Yeah. Close the mouth, dude. And just, and I'm convinced, I'm just convinced that, dude, just listen. And I'm just convinced that listening is a lost art, dude. It's a lost art form. But, but if we can master it, if we can master listening, we can master listening then everything else that we're trying to teach you in this framework do will be easier you know you mentioned i think it was on the last um episode where you said something along the lines of you're not trying to bring a preconceived notion in you're preparing mm-hmm. right yeah and this is what this is man when you're listening and you've prepared and now you truly listen you don't you'll know where to take the conversation you, you don't need an outline you don't you need the framework that we're walking you through. That's what you need because you know how to bring it to ask questions to bring it to a purpose. But like you're going to be asking questions based upon the conversation that you're having. Right. Mm. You're asking questions, man, because I, I need to be very clear. Like the goal of every pillar that we're walking through in this sales framework is relationships. It's relationships, man. It, it is obviously to inspire the individual to take whatever action they need. But that's how you build a relationship, man. So you're building relationships and the stronger your relationships are, the stronger your business will be. 
And Pa'akawa'a almost always guarantees a stronger relationship because people love to feel seen and validated and recognized and heard. And when we listen with love, we provide the goodness and aloha that this world desperately needs, dude. Because we're listening with intent, listening with love. Which is why Pa'akawa'a and cells is a selfless act of love, dude. It's exercising true aloha by putting other people's needs before your own needs. And when we do that, man, we are not only in a position to bless our lives, we're in the position to bless the lives of others. Because remember, we get what we want by helping other people get what they need. And the only way that we understand what they need is by asking questions relentlessly to really uncover it, drilling down to really uncover it so we can help solve it together, right? Yeah. Yep. Pa'akawa. Shut your damn mouth. Dude, Ty, thank you, man. Thank you. So good. So many takeaways. Anything so many else goals. you want to add? Uh, man, no. Other Like, no. I want to shut my mouth. <laughs> Pa'akawa, bro. Hey, thanks, y'all, man. If you found value from this one, share. Tag us in it. Leave us a comment, man. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review. Let us know what you found valuable. That's actually the funnest part, in my opinion, is understanding what resonated with you. Yeah. So share that kind of stuff, man. We'd love to hear it. And then, as per usual, man, invest always with Aloha. Peace. Multifamily Mindset. Podcast. Think, think bigger. Think bigger.